some of the most impactful companies in the world, the Microsofts, the Facebooks, the Netflix, all started really small. Now, whether that's a Bill Gates, a Mark Zuckerberg, or Reed Hastings, all of them started with very small teams. In fact, forget that. The Wright brothers, just the two of them, changed our world by inventing the aeroplane. So it doesn't take huge teams to be able to impact the world. Hey friends, I'm Ahmed, a Scaled Agile and Productivity Coach based in the UK. If you're new to Scaled Agile and you want to learn all about the Agile teams in SAFE, you come to exactly the right video. Now this is the third video in the Safe 6 for Beginners series. So in order that you get all of the videos that I'll be placing in the right order, because there is a sequence to them, please ensure you hit that subscribe button so you get them in the right order as and when I release them. Okay, so what is an Agile team? So it's basically a cross-functional group of 10 or fewer individuals with all the skills necessary to define, build, test and then eventually deliver that value to the customer. So agile teams, we can broadly think of them in two kind of categories. One could be technical, so they could be your hardware team building hardware products or software products, or you could even have business teams. Now examples of those could be sales teams or marketing teams, even content creators I've seen um, work really well as agile teams as well. So let's have a look now at some of the key characteristics of an Agile team. Now the first characteristic is that they are cross-functional. So what do we mean when we say cross-functional? Well, rather than having a team of designers, a team of developers, a team of testers, and they each hand off their work from one type of role or function to another, we have a team that has all of the skills that are needed to deliver their mission. That's what we mean when we say it is cross-functional. Okay, so how do we know whether we've got a well-formed team? How do we know whether we've got the right skills for, for our team? And the best way to know that you've got that is to identify what the goals and the outcomes and the value that you need to deliver from that team. And then you ask yourself, what skills do I need to be able to fulfill and deliver that value? And, and as long as you're able to do that, you know you've got a, the right skills for your team. Right. So let's move on to value. One of the key things in Agile, as you'll probably know, is around the delivery of regular and small units of value. So our teams ideally will be optimized and organized to deliver though that type of value. That's what we call a stream aligned team. It's aligned towards the customer needs and the customer wants and to be able to deliver that value. But sometimes we might have need for specialism. So for example, you might now have AI built into many products. So for that, you might want a specialized team so that we abstract away that complexity from the other teams. And that's a use case, for example, for what's called a complicated subsystem team. It's high tech specialization in a specific area could be in algorithms, encryption, AI, or anything else that's highly specific to um, that product or solution that you're delivering. The third type of team is called a platform team. And this is where we build a platform that exposes services and APIs for other teams to be able to use. And finally, you might need to spin up short-term teams or also known as enabling teams that could provide tools or services or other expertise to other teams uh, on your Agile release train. So there are four different types of Agile teams. So that's all great, I hear you say, but how do we create high-performing, excellent teams? And the first thing we need to do is we need to align on a shared and common vision. I mean, the teams that, are, that I've seen in my career that are the highest performing, 
they have a passion and they have a drive and they have a belief in terms of what they're actually doing. Let me give you a little example. Years ago, I was working for a large oil company and we were building their pension system. And whilst we were just thinking of this as just another IT system, we really didn't have that passion and a drive. It was only until we met the customers that we were serving, the pensioners, and we talked to them and we realized how important the work that we were doing was to other people's lives. It made a complete difference to the way in which we approached that project and the way in which the passion and the motivation we had to actually deliver because we were delivering for these people that we had actually taken the time to go and meet and we knew we were impacting people's lives. So having that understanding of your customer, why you are doing it, what does it, what does it mean for them, can be really important for a team to go from just, eh, okay, to something that really is impactful and exciting as well. The other thing that all high performing teams actually have is, is that they have a range of skills, a diverse set of knowledge that they can bring towards solving that problem. And that, that then comes together when we've got a strong degree of trust, accountability and sincerity in terms of meeting the commitments. And finally, in addition to having all of these characteristics, having a little bit of fun and enjoyment when you're doing it is really, really important because otherwise it becomes very dull and difficult to keep going sprint after sprint after sprint and it feels like you are hamster running on a treadmill and you have no way um, out of that. So having a little bit of fun and enjoyment and bringing a bit of joy to the workplace is really important as well. Okay, now, so we've covered cross-functional teams. We talked about how they should be organizing around value as well. And we've also talked about some of the characteristics of high-performing teams as well. Um, now let's look at what are some of the key roles that are needed to support this high performing team. So the first role that we have in SAFE 6.0 is called a Scrum Master or the team coach. And the reason why we also call them a team coach is because the team may not be a Scrum team or a SAFE Scrum team, they could be a Kanban team. More on that later in the video. Now the Scrum Master team coach are the facilitator, they're the um, organizer, they encourage and guide the team to be able to deliver what the second role talks to us about and that is the uh, product owner defining that vision, that goal and what the outcome actually is. So they're two key roles that support and enable each of our Agile teams the first role is the Scrum Master Team Coach and the second is the Product Owner. Now, even though there are two roles that are called out, of course within your team you may have multiple different roles. Um, so please don't be confused by that. These are just the ones that are specifically called out. They're gonna be common to most of the teams that are formed in this way. Okay. So now we're getting some of the key characteristics of great teams, great agile teams over here, but we wouldn't be doing ourselves any justice if we didn't talk about the impact and the importance of getting things out of the door very quickly. Another way to say improving or optimizing your flow. On December the 1st, 1913, the Ford assembly line opens and it revolutionizes the way in which we work forever by introducing the concept of the assembly line. Till today, over a hundred years later, we are still using that model, that way of working for delivering optimally and improving our flow. The Ford assembly line revolutionized the way in which we work 
by doing a couple of things really well. And the first thing is by taking the work to the people or to the workers rather than the workers to the work. And the second is by simplifying something really complex and bringing it down into a number of small steps that each individual could actually work on. So the creation of a car was split into 45 steps that each individual could do really quickly. So what was the result of that? Well, let's have a look. In 1908, the car sold for $825. And by 1925, it sold for only $260. After nearly 17 years, it dropped by close to a third or a quarter of the original price. Making that car now affordable for the masses. Now, of course, in those days, because we were on the gold standard, there was not that much inflation. Uh, in fact, there was very, very little inflation. And if you want to know more about that, please check out the channel of my son, Yusuf Syed. Very excited. He's going to explain to you all about those things, all about finances and inflation and all those kind of different things on his brand new channel. So please check that out in the description below. Okay, so how did Ford do this? So the first thing he did is he worked in small batches and he kept the work in progress under control. So they weren't working on too many cars at the same time. They addressed any bottlenecks that they had and they periodically reviewed and improved the assembly line. And that is the crux of the agile methodology the inspect and adapt methodology so that we can continuously improve as we go along. Okay, now if you look on the screen, what you will see, what are some of the key responsibilities for a team? And the first one is our ability to connect with the customer. I mean, the most impactful companies in the world, whether they're the Apples, the Amazons, the Googles of the world, they have a strong understanding of what their customer needs and they work very hard to try to deliver on those needs and wants of the customer. The second responsibility of a team is being able to plan your work. So now if you're interested in understanding on how we do planning, you can check out at the end my PI Planning for Beginners series. Again, I've got the link in the description below. Of course, Planning without delivering value, it's got very little use. So that's the next next step. And then getting that feedback. The earlier you get the feedback, the earlier you're able to change, the more impactful you're going to be, the more successful we're likely to be. And then finally, improving relentlessly. So these are the five key responsibilities of agile teams. Okay, now let's talk about the two different types of teams really quickly. You've got a Kanban team. Now we use a Kanban model where we are in a reactive mode. So for example, if this is typical for support kind of functions where we don't know what's coming up in the next, forget the next day or the next week, we don't know what's coming up in the next five minutes, right? Things come through as and when they needed. We need to be able to respond to those really quickly. And there's no way of planning up front in terms of what is actually needed for us to deliver. So that's when we would use a Kanban model. And the focus of this is getting the work in really quickly, very quickly defining what's actually needed and pushing that through the system, through the different stages so that you can define design, build, and then test, and get that out of the way as soon as you possibly can. Um, so that's when we would use a Kanban team. Again, Kanban is all about optimizing flow and uh, enhancing and increasing our throughput. Now, when we are trying to deliver something bigger, uh, we have a product that we need to deliver. We might need to work step by step incrementally to build a bigger vision. Now, in that kind of scenario, it makes sense to actually plan what we're doing in the next two weeks. And that's where Scrum comes in. In the Scrum team, at the beginning, we plan the work that comes in and we 
organize what we're going to be doing over the next two weeks as a team and we commit to that delivery and over the course of those two weeks in safe scrum or one to four weeks in in standard scrum we deliver that uh, deliver on that commitment now on a daily basis to make sure we're on track we have this thing called the daily stand-up or the scrum call um, and basically what we do over there is we align in terms of what we have been doing the previous day what we're doing today and if there are any blockers that the, anybody needs that can hinder us from achieving our goals and objectives those are raised over there now the great thing is at the end of just two weeks you're delivering and you're showing something to our customer what have we delivered and getting that feedback really early on and that's a critical part of what we need to do and once we've done that then we can then reflect what's called a retrospective the last two weeks to see how we have actually done sounds simple sounds straightforward when done really well um, then it can create a really truly magical experience and of course as anything when done poorly then you're going to get poor results as well and though this is not a silver bullet if every step is done with care and attention and love and being meticulous then you're going to have a great team you're going to have a great experience and you're going to be able to deliver incredible value to your customer and into the marketplace and for your organization as well look that's it for agile teams uh video number three in the safe six for beginners series if you've lasted up till now i know that you you are very serious about learning and i want to congratulate you on sticking with us please smash that subscribe button so you get the next uh, video i've got a bunch of very exciting videos in the works which is going to walk you through step by step safe six for beginners series and i look forward to seeing you in the next video take care and God bless.